Hi Sharks! Today we're going to be starting Chapter 4. We're going to be practicing multiplication strategies in Chapter 4. Even though we already learned all about multiplication and we understand what it means, this chapter is going to give us a little bit of a review. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to practice your math facts and you'll get used to knowing what the products are. Just remember, all of these strategies are wonderful to use when you're using bigger numbers. But remember, you should always know your facts. You should have them memorized so that when you're in future grades, you can easily answer your math problems. So today we're going to start with multiplying by 2 and 4. So we're going to have 2 as a product in our multiplication sentences or 4. So we have two students. They're in a play. Each of the students has three costumes. How many costumes do they have in all? So right now I'm looking at my problem and I'm noticing some important things. I'm noticing the word two, and I'm noticing that that is representing my groups. I have two students, and they each have three costumes. So I can visualize that. In fact, I'm actually visualizing them in my mind holding their costumes. A lot of times these types of problems, if you form a picture in your mind, it will help you. I'm underlining the word each because it lets me know these are equal groups. And my last important information, in all. How many costumes do they have in all? So I want you to think about our four main operations, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Which two use keywords, the keywords in all? Go ahead and think. If you said addition and multiplication, you are correct. The difference is with multiplication, we have equal groups, and that is the key. And in this case, we do have equal groups. So one strategy or tool in our multiplication tool belt is drawing. So I'm drawing my two circles to represent students. And then I'm going to put little circles inside to show their costumes. So this is student one with three costumes and student two with three costumes. Now remember, whenever we're multiplying, we always think of this problem as two groups of three. This is always the first Product or first factor is always the number of groups, and the second factor is how many would be in each group. So I see that I have three plus three. I can add those together to get six. So my factors are two and three. Remember my trick, two factories, they produce a product, which is six. So we can go ahead and put six in for our answer. So the two students have three costumes in all. Very good, everybody. So there's other ways that we can look at multiplication too. Um, this is actually similar to what we just did in the first problem, but we're gonna look for a pattern in this one. So we're taking this problem two times two, and I went ahead and drew a line down the equal sign here because I feel like that's going to help you understand what this problem means. So we have the problem two times two, two groups of one, and here are the two groups of one are, two groups, with one in each group, which equals two. Next problem, two groups of two. So here are our two groups of two, which equals four. Two groups of three, here are two threes. Two groups of four, two groups of five, five plus five, and we have 10. Now as I go ahead and add in the rest of the numbers, I would like you to take a look at the products here. What do you notice about the product when you multiply by two? So I'm noticing the numbers are going up, right? They're skip counting up and they're counting up their even numbers. So it would make sense if one of my factors is even, that my products could be even also. So they're going up by even numbers there. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add something else to our tool belt, another strategy. So if you take a look, I added this to our slide, and you're going to see this as we go on for all of our lessons in Chapter 4. We had our drawing counters and circles for our first strategy. That was when we were figuring out the costumes, right here. Our next strategy um, that we're going to have right now, our new strategy is a number line. So when we have a number line, 
Um, you know, this is typically a strategy we don't often use. I kind of think of it as skip counting. You, of course, wouldn't follow and figure out a number line to solve a problem when there are usually other easier ways to figure it out. But this is just one strategy you can use. So when there are two in each group, you can count by twos to find how many there are in all. There are four students with two costumes each. How many costumes do they have in all? So I'm picturing again, getting that, that visualization in my mind. I have four students and they each have two costumes. Again, I'm seeing that important keyword each in there. So I know that I'm going to have equal groups. And so I can skip count on my number line. And just like we had before with our four groups of two, now we're gonna think of it as four jumps of two. So we're going to jump four times with two in each jump. So really we're gonna skip count that way. Two, four, six, eight. So the students have eight of the costumes in all. Now for this one, I could think, I could double this. How can you decide whether to count by twos or to double? Well, I could figure this out either way. I could break apart this four into two and two and do two times two and double it, but this is a really easy problem. I would just skip count by twos to figure it out. That would be the best way. Or you can memorize it. That's the very best way. Then you'll be ready to go for your higher level problems. Another thing that you can do is you can use doubles, just as we mentioned, for higher problems. So now we have four times five. Now when you multiply by four, you can break that four apart and think, okay, two plus two equals four. So I can figure this out by doing two times five, and again, two times five, which would be doubling that 10. So you can take this, make it two times five equals 10, and then double the 10 to get your 20. But to be honest, for this type of problem, because we're skip counting, we can skip count by fives, Five is an easy number to skip count by. So if I didn't know this by memorizing it, I would just skip count by five four times. Five, 10, 15, 20. So that would be the strategy I would use for this. As we go on in our chapter, you're gonna be learning more about breaking apart and it'll help you for um, bigger numbers as we go on. Okay, so for today, just to recap, we learned um, a few different tools that we could use for multiplication. We drew counters in groups. We had our equal groups. And we used a number line where we thought instead of four groups of two, we thought of it as four jumps of two. So we kind of essentially were skip counting here. I added skip counting here because that kind of goes along with our number line. And then we can use doubles. So today, when you are working on your problems, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be filling out a Google form. And it looks like this. You'll put your name on the, on the top and you will see a couple of pictures where you'll choose the right answer. Later on in the form, it will just get to basic facts. Um, you'll have to complete a table then as you go on. So you'll look at the table, two times one and you'll write your product, two times two and you'll write the product and so on. And you'll continue on and you'll have um, challenge at the bottom. So there are 15 problems and then the challenge are optional. So these are riddles for today that you can figure out if you would like to solve those. And then when you're finished, you'll click the submit button at the bottom and you'll be all ready to go and move on to lesson two tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow, Sharks.